to the read-along with The Way Back to Mayberry. Today we read from chapter 17, Divided We Fall. The episode is, A Feud is a Feud. And today's scripture that goes along with the chapter comes from Romans chapter 15, verses 5 and 6. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You've heard of the Hatfields and McCoys. Well, be prepared to meet the Wakefields and the Carters. In the episode, A Feud is a Feud, the Wakefield and Carter families have been feuding for more than 87 years. However, Hannah Wakefield and Josh Carter have fallen in love and they want Andy to marry them in the middle of the night. A sleepy Andy is happy to oblige until he realizes just who they are. And, to make matters worse, both Hannah and Josh's fathers burst into Andy's living room donning shotguns, and demanding that the marriage be stopped. Conceding to the gun-bearing papas, Andy halts the wedding. The next morning, Opie and Aunt Bee are a little perturbed at Andy. They feel that Andy let Mr. Carter and Mr. Wakefield push him around. They think that Andy should not be intimidated by the fathers and should perform the ceremony for Josh and Hannah. Andy does support Josh and Hannah, but he wants to find out a little more about the feud that has kept the families apart for so many years. In a memorable scene, Andy tells Opie his own version of Romeo and Juliet. Andy concludes by telling Opie that he will try to get to the bottom of the feud so that Josh and Hannah won't end up like the loving couple in that classic story. Upon further investigation, Andy realizes that neither Mr. Carter nor Mr. Wakefield have any idea why the two families are feuding. They both admit that the feud has been going on for so long that there is no one left who knows the feud's origin. Andy's plan is to end the feud once and for all by staging an old-fashioned duel between Mr. Carter and Mr. Wakefield. Andy knows that the men have no real reason to dislike each other, but to make sure everyone is safe, he secretly empties the shotguns before the men duel. As expected, Carter and Wakefield back down from the duel, but now they're concerned about being such cowards that a union of the two families could only produce a coward's coward. Andy reminds the men of the courage it took for Josh and Hannah to stand up to their fathers and is able to convince the men that any grandchild from the marriage would be just as courageous. Carter and Wakefield see the advantages of their family's union and both consent to the marriage. This episode presents a clear example of how petty differences can be so divisive. The Carters and Wakefields had no idea why they were feuding they just knew from their history that they were supposed to hate each other. I wonder if we, as believers, can be guilty of the same thing. Before I continue, I want to say that I'm not trying to trivialize the issue of doctrinal differences, but I am suggesting that we try to find common ground upon which we all can agree. Surely, unity is worth something. Several years ago, I attended a Promise Keepers convention in Atlanta. At one point, the speaker asked all 50,000 of us to shout the name of the church or denomination we belonged to. We all shouted our individual church names, and the sound came out as an unrecognizable blurb. The speaker then asked us to shout the name of our Lord and Savior, and at the same time, every man in the assembly shouted the name Jesus. This time, the message was clear as a bell. Even though we had come from different, different backgrounds and beliefs, we obviously had one thing in common. Though simple, that exercise at the convention had a powerful message. 
it caused me to realize that when our focus is on God, we are unified. However, when we are concerned with the matters of men, our unity begins to fail. We can get so caught up in our petty differences that we forget our purpose. If all of our time is spent arguing, how can we work together? The message also caused me to re-examine my attitude toward other believers. Do I have the attitude that since we don't agree on every issue, other believers are not my brothers and sisters and I shouldn't have anything to do with them? Or do I approach fellow Christians with a loving heart and try to identify the ways in which we can work together for the common good? In short, do I have an attitude of confrontation or one of acceptance? Over the past year and a half, I have been amazed at the publicity that the Mayberry Bible study concept has received. When you stop and think about it, it's really a very simple approach. You examine a show in which people can identify with the characters and situations presented. Then you reflect on those stories and think about how God can work in those same situations in your own life. In a nutshell, that's about it. People have really taken an interest in this concept, and it's not limited to a particular church or denomination. Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, Presbyterians, Churches of Christ, and others have all started Mayberry classes of their own. The simple messages of Mayberry seems to have transcended denominational boundaries. When you try to pinpoint the commonality, I believe it comes down to the fact that we all have the same ideals and goals, which include living a family-oriented, moral lifestyle in the service of our Lord. My ongoing hope is that this concept, as well as others, will continue to bring us closer together. Thank you for reading along with this chapter. I'll see you next time.